traders, Ragi here. Couple un interesting things happening in the market right now. I'm just gonna run you through some of the things on my radar to keep an eye on in this shortened week. We've got options expiration on Thursday. So let's see what we're working with. We have some interesting Darvis support right here on the 6B, uh, the British pound futures. And ideally, again, kind of embracing a mantra that I really try to make sure I live and share, which is I don't know where the markets are going next, but I do know what I want to do if it reaches my price, right? So is the market going to keep going lower? Don't know. Will it correct? Well, we could. We've got a support level here with the Darvis, but I only know that once we get into this zone, I'd like to be a short seller or a buyer of puts. So again, if you if you embrace, we don't know where the market's going to go because let's face it, nobody knows where the markets are going. And clearly not in a short-term way. But if we know what we want to do when we get there, you can really use the analogy that I like to teach, which is you are a major league batter. The market is the pitcher. The pitcher's going to throw a ball. We know that, but we don't know what it is, right? Our job is to recognize it as quickly as possible, know whether it's in our zone and hopefully make contact with it. So we're always waiting. We're always waiting. I think I think another great analogy is the boxer uh, being a counter puncher, right? And I think a lot of us have experienced when we're the boxer and when we're the bag. I think usually when we're the bag is when we think we can, um, you know, skip the counter punching and mount an offense. I can't mount an offense against the, the markets, right? Until I start writing checks and the bank bounces, we're going to really have to focus on, we don't know where the markets are going to go, but we know what we want to do when it gets there. That to me is the heart of trading. So I hope that makes sense as I'm talking about the 6B here. That being said, I'm getting a lot of questions about the S&P. What's next for the S&P? S&P is actually in an interesting spot. We've got the 200 propulsion. We've got the 50% from this low to this high, the last major move, right? And, and so if the S&P is going to make a stand, this would be the place that it would do it, uh, ideally, right? Uh, and, and notice another thing you can look at here. Let me show you one other thing. If you're using the layout that I provide you all in the rooms, uh, you know you, you have this slow stochastic setting, uh, 21.3. Uh, by the way, a number of my indicators that have been available free since 2017, I believe it is, maybe 2016, are available over at CountdownTrader.com. We have a number of free tools that I've made available for many years. Why? Gang, I think they're going to move the needle for you. I really, really do. And if they help you, hey, let's face it, it's, if they help you, you're going to come join my mastery, or you're going to come join the futures room, or you're going to come join me in a class. But I want you to be able to preview and use them and benefit from them. And then if you say, Rog, yeah, this is working, you know where to find me. <laughs> All right. So this level right here, as you can see, is the halfway point. And if we are going to find support, there's really one the 200, two, the 50%, and maybe three, this 50 area on the slow stochastic. So I prefer to look at slow stochastics and chop, and you'll see that's exactly what this tool does. How do I know it's chop? Yellow, neutral, JT, multi. Yellow, neutral, JT, trade flag, right? And that's where, you know, overbought stochastic and signals start to kick in. That's where oversold stochastic and signals kick in, right? So give that a whirl. I think you're gonna find that very, very helpful. This is built into TOS. You know, all I've done is I just overlaid a tool so they share the same cell, the grid, uh, in, in the uh, studies, and then I just overlaid them so it's just taking up less space. But this is just a slow stochastic built into TOS that in the context of CHOP, you're gonna find is gonna work really, really well for you. Okay, so that's the, that's the uh, s and I want to mention that if there's a corner of the S&P that's keeping it from looking as weak as the Dow and the NAS and even the Russell are right now, it's healthcare. You're looking for a buy the dip opportunity that's related to the S&P, right? Focus on XLV. Focus, so that's the tide. XLV is the tide. The stock within them is the boats. This is just a roggyism, boats and tide, 
All right, I worked on the water. Uh, I used to work on the, I was a dive master um, in, in college. It was one of the things that I did. In fact, that's where I met one of my mentors. He used to rent out our boat on Wednesdays. I'd skip class, take them out on a dive, him and whomever he was diving with that day, him and his buddy. And, and he ended up being a bond trader. And, and he was one of my three main mentors. Talk about luck. I'd already, I was already in the market so I could sort of speak the language, but he was an honest to goodness, full-time trader. And remember, I was 18 at the time. He drove a Porsche. There you go. That's all the technical indicator I needed. I needed the Porsche indicator, right? Think about how impressionable we were. That was it. I need to be a trader, right? So think about the XLV as a relative outperformer. That is that boats and tide approach. What else is looking really interesting? We've talked about this for a bit. Crude oil off the Darvis. And if you did take that trade, let's keep an eye on 104.9. Sounds like a radio station. Let's keep an eye on 104.9 to step out in front of size at the 50% and then see how much higher is high. We're coming into the harder earnings season, gang. If you haven't already taken a look at whatever earnings calendar you use, take a look and... What you'll see is tomorrow, BlackRock. Then we've got, you know, just take a look at this calendar. We're, this is really the beginning of earnings. We get that slew of financials, right? Let's see what XLF does. Maybe on the aftermath of that, we'll see if there's more clarity in the S&P or maybe just more clarity in financials. So really exciting stuff, I think, as we go into the second quarter. Uh, the first quarter was very good to us. Let's move into the second quarter with some momentum and some patience. And I'll see you all in the next update. Hey traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.